Yesterday, Saifulo Saipov rammed a rented truck into more than 20 New Yorkers, screaming, Alu Akbar. Eight people were murdered, and the country is once again asking why. But the answer this time is obvious. Those eight people are martyrs to a diversity cult worshipped by a ruling class. Saipov was an Islamic radical from Uzbekistan who worked as an Uber driver. He wasn't a physician or an exceptional scientific mind or a business magnate. He was doing a job literally anybody could do in a country where we have, to this day, a severe shortage of low-skilled jobs for the poor in our working class. Why was this man even in our country? Well, he was here because this country's leaders have decided that diversity, in and of itself, is of greater importance than the well-being of this country's people. That's literally true. Saipov was admitted to the U.S. under the so-called diversity lottery, something you've likely never even heard of until today. The diversity lottery was created a long time ago, back in 1990. It offers immigration visas to 50,000 people every year. Winners are chosen randomly among applicants from countries that haven't sent many immigrants to the U.S. in the past five years. Those immigrants don't have to know English. They don't have to have any skills of any kind. All they need is a high school education or at least two years of experience in certain work fields. They don't need family here in the U.S., though once they've been admitted, they're of course allowed to sponsor others to follow in their wake, chain migration it's called. Now, supposedly, immigrants admitted through the diversity lottery must show that they're non-threatening and able to support themselves, but we know that's a joke. Our leaders are not even willing to deport criminal gang members who are here legally. Once you've arrived in this country, it's almost impossible to get thrown out. Discard the propaganda. That's the case. But before getting caught up in all the depressing details around this, consider the absurdity of the entire system. Diversity lottery? America isn't a game show or a mail-in sweepstakes, it's a country. And our government is supposed to represent the interests of the people in this country, its citizens. Instead, our leaders are treating America as a prize that can be won by anyone on the planet simply for existing. Why not sell diversity scratch-off tickets in convenience stores in Kinshasa or Kuala Lumpur? It's insane, the whole thing is insane. How do you know it's insane? Because the very liberals now defending the diversity lottery and calling you a bigot for raising questions about it would never in a million years practice a diversity lottery themselves. Would Harvard implement a diversity lottery for admissions? Of course it wouldn't. Harvard wants to be selective and only admit the best. It would never just pick a hundred random applicants based on country of origin without bothering to check their grades or test scores. No way. Do you think Google or Facebook or MSNBC would hire with a diversity lottery? Just pick people at random without even reading their resumes? Please. Did President Obama hold a diversity lottery when he made judicial appointments? Does the military hold a lottery for promoting officers? No, 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 of course not. Because in all of those organizations, it's obvious that quality matters. You want to pick the best people and allow the greater organization to flourish. Somehow, though, and this is the most perverse part of all of this, the greatest organization of all, the United States, has decided that quality is irrelevant. Diversity has become an end in itself. Who is responsible for this? Well, it's not a partisan project. Leaders in both parties decided a diversity lottery sounded like a great idea. Senator Chuck Schumer of New York introduced the 1990 bill creating the visa system when he was still a member of the House of Representatives. In 2006, Schumer said he could tell the diversity lottery was, lottery was working perfectly because he could see immigrants while riding his bike. This is an excellent program, and nobody has said it's done a bad job. It's small. There are only about 50,000 visas a year. As I ride my bike around New York City on the weekends, I see what immigrants do for America. And this program has dramatically helped. Now, irony of ironies, bicyclists have themselves become targets of an extremist who is admitted thanks to Schumer's grand vision. An excellent program. Okay. So excellent, in fact, that in 2009, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas lobbied to double the number of diversity lottery visas to 100,000. The only surprise is she didn't ask for 500,000 or a million. Why not? Diversity is our strength. Keep that in mind. But Republicans, to be fair, played their part as well, a lot of them. Five Senate Republicans still in office today voted for the law that created the diversity lobby. They are Thad Cochran of Mississippi, John McCain of Arizona, Orrin Hatch of Utah, Chuck Grassley of Iowa, and now Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. We reached out to every single one of them this afternoon to see how they feel about the diversity lottery now. 
McCain, Grassley, and Cochran say they want the diversity lottery abolished. Will the rest come around? We'll be watching. What about the Democrats? Congress is, of course, hopelessly divided on immigration, but we could at least unite around the principle that immigrants ought to be chosen because they can benefit this country. You'd think that would be an easy one. Many lawmakers would deflect if you asked them, though. They'd say they want the program ended as part of what they're calling comprehensive immigration reform. But there's no need for that. It's an excuse offered to allow lawmakers to do nothing, as they have done for decades. Congress could, in fact, end the program tomorrow without touching any other part of the immigration system. And if Congress actually cared about the well-being of this country, they would, of course, do that. But sadly, it seems unlikely any of this is going to happen. Why? You know why. The truth is our ruling class prefers immigrants to Americans. They don't say that out loud. They don't need to say it out loud. Watch how they act. Who are they more worried about, the so-called dreamers here illegally or the 60,000 American citizens who died of drug ODs last year? It's not even close. Our elites see Americans as beyond hope and worse than that, as dangerous. Just this week, you watched an ad in the Virginia governor's race premised on the notion that the biggest threat to this country is pickup driving Trump voters who want to run over Muslim children. Even though, if you want to get factual about it, in a country with 63 million Trump voters, that has never happened. Meanwhile, an Islamic extremist literally just ran over people with a truck. Yet authorities, as they always do, race to treat that as an isolated incident, a lone wolf attack with no implications for American policy. Are our leaders lying to us? Are they blind? Both, probably. Diversity is their religion, and in their own way, they're religious extremists. When the safety and well-being of Americans conflict with their faith, they will choose their faith every time. Mark Kerkorian has been watching all this unfold for decades. He's the executive director of the Center for Immigration Studies, and he joins us tonight. Mark, how did this become law? Uh, good question. This is sausage making. It was part of a bigger bill, but basically it was a kind of a pretext to amnesty Irish illegal immigrants originally because uh, this was, remember, there was a big Reagan amnesty in 1986. Well. The Irish illegal immigrants didn't qualify for, because they hadn't been here long enough. So they cooked up some way. Schumer was part of it. Kennedy, Al D'Amato, who was senator from New York at that time, cooked up this idea of diversity as a pretext for amnestying Irish illegals. And then it morphed into this program that is now a kind of affirmative action almost for immigrants from other countries who can't get in otherwise, as you explained. But I mean, our, our whole immigration system is not so different, actually. I mean, we don't, aggre with some visa exceptions, but we don't screen for skills in the way that most countries do already. Yeah, I mean, the large majority of immigrants, something like two-thirds, are only brought in because of their family connections. And frankly, half of the rest come in because they're related to people who are skilled or something like that. So that skills really play a very small role. And in this visa lottery, uh, literally, it's almost anybody in the world. And even the, you would mention that you have to have a high school diploma, for instance. But really, what does it take to get a high school diploma in Uzbekistan? I'm not criticizing the schools. I'm I talking understand. about you can go around the corner and buy That's a exactly high school right. diploma. You can buy one here. So in, in these many years, in the 27 years this has been law, has nobody said, wait a second, this is the greatest country on earth. Everyone wants to come here. Why are we handing out green cards on the basis of a lottery? People have been saying this repeatedly. In fact, the House, a number of years ago, even passed a bill to get rid of the visa lottery, and it didn't go anywhere. It always comes up. Uh, so who's lobbying year. against it? I mean, just let's put a fine point on yeah. this. The, Where is the lobby that wants to preserve something that makes no sense? There's two uh, forces protecting it. One is narrow, one is broader. The narrow one, interestingly, is the Black Caucus, because they have now come to adopt this as their pet immigration program because it, um, a lot of people from sub-Saharan Africa come through it. And so that's the kind of narrow issue. The broader issue Let me is just say, has any policy, any single policy in modern America hurt Africans more than our immigration? No, it's a good question. And in fact, even African immigration is actually a problem for black Americans. Look at the numbers, exactly. Sorry, what was but the then, second? Yeah, but more broadly is basically our whole political class, because the idea seems to be that immigration must never go down and must always go up. And so anything that would cause immigration to go down or cast it in any kind of questionable light has to be resisted no matter what. So that when, for instance, the Gang of Eight bill did in fact get rid of the visa lottery, 
But it doubled legal immigration. Of course. It doubled guest workers. It, in, it amnestied millions of illegal immigrants. So, I mean, that's not any kind of price to no. pay. There's no reason they couldn't just get no. rid of it tomorrow. And there's been a lot of lying about that exact subject today. So thank you for setting the thank record you. straight. Mark, good to see you.